I came from a musical family. So when I was in second grade, I had my dad for a teacher. He was a music teacher in the public schools. I don't think he ever told me that I should go into music, but the example was always there. And he had such a full life and an enjoyable life, and it just seemed logical that I'd look into that. There was one time I came home from high school, and I said the guidance teacher had suggested that I go into law. And my dad hit the ceiling. He said, I don't think he ever told me to become a music teacher, but that concerned him. So it, it was just his presence, his support, his belief, his example. These all set high standards for me, and I tried to emulate them. I'm a native of New York State, uh, upstate New York, born in Ilion, New York. Graduated from Oneonta High School, went to Hartwick College, which is also in Oneonta. My dad was a professor of music there. Taught five years in a rural school in upstate New York, West Winfield, and then went back to college, to graduate school, to Eastman School of Music for my master's and my doctorate. I received the doctorate and taught for one year in a public school in Rochester, New York, then moved into Eastman itself. Eastman School offered me a position. I was there for five years. Uh, then went down to Memphis, was down there for three years, and then heard about this opening at a school up in New England. I've always loved the Northeast. For many years, my folks had a cottage up in the Adirondack Mountains, and that developed a real love for that area. And in looking at the map, I wasn't certain where New Hampshire was, but I soon found that it was east of the Adirondack Mountains. So it seemed a logical move to make. And in 1979, I was brought up here for an interview, and it worked out. And when we arrived in late August, it was a gloomy day, and there was rain, and the campus was a far cry from what it is today. My wife said, do we really want to move up here? We, we did, and it was such a, a right move. Um, life has been happily ever after. I served as chair from 79 until 2002. It was the old Silver Hall. Music was down at the far end. Kind of primitive and yet such a desire among the faculty and among the students to excel. And I think that is the one common thread that I've seen in the, what now, 34 years I've been here. And it's what makes this place really unbelievably rich as far as potential. We also had something quite unusual, and that is handbell ringers. And this is uh, something that set Plymouth State apart, and that very few colleges had that. As it turned out, my wife conducted that, and we were able to take handbells along with the band and the jazz band and the choir on tour, little recruitment tours, around to some of the schools in New Hampshire. In 2002, one of my colleagues, Jonathan Santori, succeeded me as chair. Basically now, I teach the music appreciation course. We call it Exploring Music. It used to be Introduction to Music. And I love it because this course brings students from all over the campus. It's not just music majors. They're the most wonderful students. And the nice thing is, it's not a performance class. It's mostly music as an enriching part of life. And it's just a, it's a great course to teach. Pemi Choral Society is a community choir of now close to 100, I think, now. Uh, when I first arrived, it was about 35 or 40 members, and they had just lost their conductor. Uh, my wife and I, Margot, was the accompanist, and it continued for 33 years, I guess. The nice thing about a community chorus is that it was an outreach for Plymouth State. We had a couple of members that drove over from Maine every Monday night, and some members came down from Lisbon, and some came up from Concord, and some from Canaan and so forth. It's a community force and a force for good. We retired in December of 2011 and that semester we had the highest enrollment ever of 140 singers. Many of them came back from early years to celebrate with us. One of the students who took all of my classes and then signed up for PEMI, a young man, his senior year his dad passed on completely unexpectedly. And Margaret and I went down to the I guess you call it a wake, and it was a very emotional time. Um, he thanked me for coming down, and we hugged each other, and, and it was a very emotional time. He sang in PEMI that semester. And so the final concert of PEMI ended, and I realized it was coming to an end. 
and Margo and I embraced and they gave us flowers, and very nice. But it was, it was difficult. And then at the end of that, I stood backstage and several of the members, one by one, came out and thanked me and gave me a hug. And then this young man did. And it was like the other end of the hug. We had gone down to help him at a very difficult time. And he did the same for me. Some students teach you as much as you teach them. Why have I stayed? Because there's so much more to be done, and it's so rewarding. So much good is waiting to be realized, and Plymouth State helps you to do that. That's our purpose.